And we're live here on Facebook. I'd like to welcome those listening in podcast land. And also would like to welcome my buddy Rich. And uh, you can't see him or will you hear him? Well, you'll probably hear him, but uh, only in the background. Uh, my, my father is here. Joe is uh, participating, but not as you will, not as much as you, you might hope. So, Rich, how you doing this week? I'm doing good, Mike. So, um, pretty laid back week, even with uh, even with the birthday week. So, yeah. uh, Ooh, uh, I... it, you know, it, it was nice. Um, yeah. Got sushi for dinner. Went and saw the new Jurassic Park movie. Hey, I got a question. Yeah. How's the top of the hill look? Hmm. I, I don't know. We're, we're we're on our way down. We're, we're, You're we're over the hill, down. Rich. I, I am, but you know the best parts of the roller coaster come after you after you descend on that first hill, though. So. That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, but let's uh, so start off the show wishing you the. Uh, I know it's late, but I hope you had the happiest of birthdays. Uh, you had you've had forty great years so far. Let's go for eighty more. Yeah, 120 is a long. I know. 20 is really old. But yeah, but I, I but saying 40 more seems like that that doesn't seem like. It's only 80. Yeah, that's only 80. That's not enough. So 80 more. We're going for 80 more. You're going for 120, All right. Rich. All right. Or Jesus yeah. comes back first, whichever happens. Mm-hmm. So, Mike, is it, it you you uh you, you sent me a message on my birthday saying that uh um. You you made her a little bit of a road trip. Where'd you have to go this week? Oh, we we had to go get an air conditioner from a few from a couple hours away. So only cost us twenty five bucks. Cool our cools our room well enough. We're good. Okay. So that's good. We have we have cooling on the main floor so that we can uh, we can at least stay comfortable and live up there again. So. I think our fishies are miss- missing us, though, because we're not down here as much as, as we used to be. You can't see it, but the piranha's here, and he's big, and he's cool-looking. But we've changed the basement, so you don't ever have to look at any of the f- fish because you s- they sit directly behind you. I don't know if that's going to help you at all, but uh, we'll see. We'll make do. Anyway, so, Rich, uh, we're, we're doing this on a Thursday, so you can go to uh, go out uh, to the cabin with the family. Um we still need to welcome one last group of people. You want to do that or you want me to? Um, I'll take it. Welcome to uh, all the folks watching on YouTube. Um, so if, no matter where you're watching or listening to us, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you haven't already done so, pop over to Fans of Balls and Six over on our Facebook page so you can be notified when we post polls or just random posts um, about sports that we from time to time put on there not too often yeah okay um this week we got a really big show for you uh we have nfl news and a preview uh for this week uh along with um well we got to talk uh the all-star break rich what else we got yeah we'll be uh, going into the nascar corner taking a look at taking a look at new hampshire and pocono and also talking about a race that will be coming to the city of Chicago, not Chicago land, but yeah. Chicago proper. So, Mike, but all that and more, Mike, but what do we got to do first? We got to roll the intro. Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa, this is Balls and Stick the Podcast with your host, Mike. And Rich. And we're back. Okay. So, Rich, this week, um, where was I? Oh, yeah. This week, we had a poll question. Uh, short poll question. Do you want to let it go till Friday before we call the winner? Or do you think we have enough of a sample size of our audience to make the call? All right. We have- with the numbers we've been polling on on these polls lately, um, I think we're okay making a winner. I mean, we have but 13 the, votes. We'd have 13 votes, yeah. That's a lot more than I thought we'd have. Yeah. So here's what I'll do, Dyke. In the odd event that sometime between here and Saturday, when the next poll will go live, 
if be like Mike somehow pulls ahead, we will change the results from what we say that the, say that the winner is today while we're recording. This. Yeah. So right now, what who's the winner? It's Go Cubs Go, eleven to two over be like Mike. All right, I voted for Go Cubs Go because I'm still holding fast that be like Mike is a marketing jingle and not necessarily a song. Well, that, that's what I associate it with. That's I all. no, I totally understand, but be like my, and and but be like Mike was everywhere at that time frame. Um, I, it's fine. I voted for Go Cubs Go because it's a. I mean, it, it, to me, it's yeah. But I like both of them. So, okay, this week's poll question, Rich, what's it going to be like? We're going to go with the remaining songs from our that have made it along this far. Cleveland Rocks, Hot Rod Lincoln, and Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Yeah, that'll go live Saturday at noon. Yeah. Uh, you got it scheduled already? Um, I'll get it scheduled. When okay. I was trying to schedule it on the app, it wasn't letting me schedule it. It would have posted it right then and there last night. Okay. So I'm going to try and set it up on the desktop. Okay. Before uh I... Um, or I'll just post it live on Saturday. So again, that is Cleveland Rocks, Hot Rod Lincoln, and Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Yes, sir. Okay. Rich, do you see what's coming up next? Um, I do, Mike. Is it a left turn? It is. And after that? Uh, is, it, is it another left turn? Yes, it is. Because we are heading into the NASCAR corner, presented as always by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated, Moline, Illinois, on Fifth Avenue. Check them out in person or on their eBay store for all your sports memorabilia needs. Once again, that is Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated, Fifth Avenue, Moline. All right, Mike, nicely done. So, uh, Mike, we were in New Hampshire last weekend for the Am Better 301. Your race winner was Christopher Bell. And my pick of Joey Lugano came in 24th. Your pick Kay. of William Byron came in 11th. You got to help me out here. So I made it to the end of the second stage. And then the wife was getting hungry and we wanted to go. I, I'm like, I don't want to cook tonight. Let's go out to eat. We didn't, we, we had the church picnic last week. So we ate, we ate at the church. We didn't go out to eat after lunch. We actually found a really great place. We're going to take you there. Uh, if you guys come up in a couple of weeks, um, it's awesome. We've loved we love the food that we got so far, and uh, yeah, it's down it's right on the lake. It's great. We we loved it. Anyway, okay. Uh, if we do it, if you guys come up, we're gonna go there. But uh, so the thirty minutes that it took to get there, uh, I get in there, and all of a sudden, Joey Logano was in the top three when I left at the end of the stage break, and then all of a sudden. He's not even in the top 15. Do you know what happened? Yeah. It came down to pit strategy. Okay. They were, there was a late, there was a late caution. Joey Logano was pretty far back in the field. The front part, he chose to stay out on the track on a caution and to get track position. And the way the uh, commentators talked about it is, I think it was him and maybe three other guys, two other guys, I don't remember the other guys' names, were betting that there was going to be one more caution that might have sent it into overtime. Ah, and, okay. the, uh, and that late race caution never came, so Logano couldn't go into the pits to get uh, more fuel. So with, I think, three or four laps to go, he had to pit for fuel or else he wouldn't have finished the race, so that's why he got 24th. Okay. But I mean, he was, but, but yeah, you're right. He was running in like the top ten and was above Byron. Yeah. With, with like ten, I think maybe fifteen, fifteen, ten to fifteen laps to go. But then between him not having as fresh tires and try have probably having to conserve fuel, waiting for waiting out a caution that never came, he eventually lost track position, started fading back in the field, and then had to pit. Okay, I mean that makes sense. Yeah, I I just I didn't get to see it. I was bummed, um, but I was happy when I saw that William Byron was going to be ahead of Joey Logano. So, win for me. Mark that up to number fourteen, and you're on number eight. Yep, still on eight. Sorry, right, Mike. So we're going up to, up into the Poconos yep. for the M and M's 
fan appreciation 400 yep um as uh eminem mars decided to uh sponsor the race since it's their last year as a nascar sponsor and uh the poconos are near her not too far away from hershey pennsylvania yeah the headquarters so mike who do you like up there you know the tricky triangle you got to go with experience rule number one you have to go with experience this is a track that uh, they don't always race in the uh, in the Bush series, so you don't get it as you're on your way up. And uh, yeah, I you got to go with experience. So I'm going with Denny Hamlin. All right, Denny Hamlin's a solid pick. He he's been struggling of late, as for whatever reason, either him or he's just had some bad luck this year, other than his one win. But yeah. but you're right, experience does matter at this track. So I'm probably going to go with an unpopular guy um, amongst, well, pr- probably everybody that I'd be watching the race with, but he's got a good track record at, at the Tricky Triangle, and I need a win. So I'm going to go with his teammate, Kyle Busch. Okay, and then uh, we have our guest in the studio. Uh, he's going to walk around here. He's going to officially give his a guess. So... Uh... I think yeah, Logano is going to do well at Pocono this week. That's uh, it, folks. He says yeah, Logano. I, 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 yeah, I like Logano as a pick too. Yeah, he's been he's been great all year. Um, he but the hard part is there's things like last week where they make they make gambles. And again, he has he doesn't he have two wins already this year? Yeah, I believe Logano does have two wins. Joe's saying he thinks he just has one. Either way, he he's got he's in a good and he's got good he's got enough playoffs. points he's got the win he's gonna be in the playoffs. But so Joe, they Lugano they, Lugano has two he won Darlington and um, St Louis. Yeah, see look at me I knew that. Uh, and uh, with those two wins he's gonna be in the playoffs he can afford to gamble so that's where. I, that's one of the reasons why I wouldn't take him. Because right now, him winning is all that matters. Points don't matter to him. So he can do whatever it takes and to try to win, which which is what he did last week. By the way, if that if another caution comes out right before he, he has to pit, guess what? Everybody's going to pit with him, and he's going to have that great track position. He ends up possibly winning the race. Come on now. So I think the gamble was a good gamble this last week. I think he'll be able to do something like that this week. We'll see how it goes. Rich, anything else about Pocono? Um, not really about Pocono, but uh, circling back to New Hampshire, there was a little bit of uh, yeah. kind of roughhousing going on on the race course between Austin Dillon and Brad Kozlowski. Yeah. As it, I think it started with... Hamlet, um, Dylan, kind of a little bit bumping or getting a little bit too close to uh, Kozlowski's Kozlowski's Ford, and then you see as they're as the no, he bumped him. He he bumped him. He He bumped him. He did bump him, and then that, and then Kozlowski took it one step further and started pushing him off the track. He he Kozlowski was done. He he did some. He he went cray cray on that. He made. A move that downright dangerous and hurt him overall in the race but uh yeah okay um so uh we got we finally got the official word and the track layout of the chicago race on the street now everybody is saying that this is the first street course in nascar I'm going to disagree. Why is that? The original Daytona course was on roads and the beach where you could drive as a person. Hmm. I would argue the original Daytona track was the first street course. Now, since, since modern NASCAR... You're right. That is, this is the first street race we've seen. But uh, t- 
technically the I would argue that uh, that that uh, that the uh, that, that the old Daytona course was. Um, so the layout of the track uh, is that. Where are we at? I'm trying to. So it's going to be a 2.2 mile. 2.2 mile. It looks like 12 turn. 12 turn. Course. Yep. Yeah. 12 turn course. You're going to see it go along uh, Lakeshore Drive, Grant Park, and you'll have Congress and Roosevelt. So the pit road, pit roads, and the start. And the finish line are actually going to be right in front of Buckingham Fountain. Buckingham Fountain. Yeah, this is going to be some of the most pretty uh, view, pretty images of NASCAR you're going to see as they're going along South Shore Drive. It that's going to be amazing. the The view from from the lake uh, across to to the track. Uh, they're good. You know that they're going to get a shot like that, whether it's the aerial shots going to be that, or they're going to have a boat out there getting an image. Something is going to be there. It's going to be a great r race. I think the, I think the layout's a little boring in my mindset. Um, they, it's nice that they have turn three, which is a wide, which is a sweeping turn on South shore. Um, I th yeah, uh, I think it'll be interesting to see how it actually plays out. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm game. You want to go? Yeah. I don't know. I think I'd want to see how they plan to have spectators. Well, along the course, I don't know. If I mean, gonna Buckingham is going to be. You're going to have. You're going to have stands and seats along Buckingham and on on the the the, the lake side and, and on the baseball diamonds. Like they're going to. That's on the baseball diamonds. Yep. Around I think turns. If we're looking at the map, folks. Turns two. Probably around parts two, three, one, and six, probably. Yeah, those, that's going to be the the points. biggest. Um, you might get some guys. The basketball courts might have some stuff right next to pit lane. Uh, again, it, it's all gonna the the bigger the bigger part is gonna be where are their quote unquote garage area is gonna be. Um, how much how much time are they gonna let all of that be blocked off? Like, I I don't know how it's gonna work. I I'm intrigued. Um, tons of fans once uh, at at once baseball fields so yeah that, that's what they're looking looking at the the baseball fields between turns one and six exactly like we said that it's literally a quote from uh someone in nascar so yeah it's so, uh, so they chose to um I, I think that kind of maybe the announcement of this was a little underwhelming yeah as they announced that oh we we have an agreement to have the race here yeah, on a three make three, but they didn't want to make the announcement on the same date that they announced that they had an agreement to do this. Yeah, but it, and they brought in Bubba Wallace as the NASCAR driver rep to come in and be on hand for the big announcement. Yeah, and that's fine. He, he, yeah, he made a comment of well, with with uh, when we ran this course layout on in the i racing. When there was a wreck, there wasn't anywhere to go, like it's to escape a wreck to where that could cause pileups. Yep. Yep, that's going to be an issue. Because at least on the road courses, you know what you can go into the grassy areas. Yeah. Go into like those. I mean, you're off course, but you're still on the grass, and it's easy there. So I don't know if the road is going to be wide enough. Would it have been a better idea, and, and this is just me at throwing spitballing, would it have been a better idea for them to go uh, for for the start finish line to be actually on North Shore or on South Shore? South Lake Shore and, and for, still in front of the Buckingham Fountain. But, but the other not, side. But the other side. I think so. You would have had a little bit more. That's, more that would have been. There. 
you know how much how fast they could they're gonna they would get going before they have that dog leg and then that turn four they would be flying they're already gonna be flying through there but yeah i think this course i don't i don't think this course is as fun as it could be i think there's a lot better courses they could have done but it's what they have and we'll see yeah, if they're going to be doing it for the next three years. Yep. So I, I think even if the first one is a little bit of rough and you see a portion of the field get knocked out of the race, like you always see with a road or road course sometimes, is that even the best drivers can get knocked out of the race yeah. early or midway through just because that's their accidents happen. You, you get off course and, I, the get, biggest... and it's hard to hard path it's gonna be but i think with this race you you almost have to go with practice and qualifying and track position is going to be yeah is going to get you the win in this race i don't 100%. know how how hard it is i think it's going to be hard to pass the thing that scares me um the thing that's going to scare me the biggest is is NASCAR going to be willing to work and communicate and and get the engineers that run the the road or the street courses that that are out there the Grand Prix that are out there already uh, the Miami Grand Prix the, those type things so that if a wreck happens in a area where they're going fat, like if something happens on South Lakeshore Drive. And somebody gets in a wreck. Are they gonna kill kill a fan because of debris and stuff? Because te- you gotta get temporary barriers that are up that are a- beyond safe. And uh, they have a hard. They've had a hard enough time getting ba- safe enough barriers in tracks that are permanent, let alone temporary barriers. So that's kind of my, my worry about it. Uh, but they have a year to get it figured out. Hopefully they do a good job. Um, my, the, other, the second biggest worry is, are they going to fix the potholes or is that going to be part of the character of the race? <laughs> that's a good part. I mean, if you want to make it a true street race. I mean, it's, it's Illinois roads. We all know yeah. that July, they're, they're normally under construction the whole time because of all of the then you know what if there's a construction zone on the course i think it needs to stay up then yeah i I agree part of the course it's got to stay up as part of the course south lakeshore is under construction so you have to you have to go single file and can only go 25 (laughs) miles an hour through that uh, section of the course that seems about right and there would be speeding penalties oh yeah 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 you uh, know chicago is going to have their speed cameras on (laughs) <laughs> and and they're gonna every every time they're gonna say okay write that guy a ticket write that guy a ticket woo we're making it big tonight <laughs> cops are gonna be out there with radar twenty four eighty eight miles an hour on in a thirty five get him write him up they gotta make money somehow well I don't know do do you get tickets on on those areas of Chicago because you're you're keeping up with traffic. <sighs> Yeah, that's true. At that point. Yeah. Yeah, at that point you are you're in Chicago. If you don't keep up with traffic, you might get a ticket for yeah. So if somebody's going slow on the course, do they get a penalty for uh, or is is are they going to get a ticket for impeding traffic? Hmm. So. Okay. Um Rich, anything else? Um not really in the world of NASCAR. Um So uh you want to do the outro oh, with the um I guess with um, along with the Chicago race up for the Cup Series, they're going to be putting the IMSA Sports Car Series oh. on the course the day before. So do you think any of the Cup guys will get into the driver's seat in that series to maybe get some more? Those cars are so different. Those cars are so different. I don't think – I think the only thing it helps you with is track layout knowledge. And with mm-hmm. the way that the simulators work nowadays – uh, and especially the guys that have uh, these guys have um, I'm going to make a quote and the only person that's going to understand it is going to be the guy sitting next to me, not even the guy on the TV. But they have simulators 
that are the equivalent of the Viper. Now, what the Viper is, my dad worked at a worked for a company that built and maintained uh, arcade machines. Okay. And they made a simulator that you climbed into and you the door shut and they had screens on three sides of it. So it was full immersive. You couldn't really look back because your chair was there. But you were in, you were full immersive and it tilted and it could tilt and do all that stuff fast enough that you really did feel like like you got the feeling like you were kind of weightless. Now, yes, your arms hung and you that stuff, but the floaty of weightlessness and all that or like when you have turbulence, you would feel that in that. And these guys have NASCAR simulators that are very similar to that. So it, they're going to be able to get the full feel of their car in the simulator. They're not, they don't need to do it in a car that's not going to have the same feel. Do you think that they will have to do, with the course being what it is, will, they, will we see a full field of cars? Yes. Or like they have to do with the Coliseum race, did, would you have to race your way into the race? It's a two-mile course. They're going to have a full field. Okay. And it's a points race, so you have to have a full field. Fair enough. So. All right, Mike. So that was the NASCAR Corner, presented as always by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated, Moline, Illinois, Fifth Avenue. Uh, there in Moline, or you can check them out on eBay, Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated. So, Mike, we're going to stay in the city of Chicago to talk to Chicago Cubs. They and suck. One- okay, enough said. Yeah, they went one and two from show to show to going into the All-Star break. They got the final win uh, against the Mets. And uh, to finish up the All-Star break, 35 and 57. 14 and a half games back of the division, 14 flat for the wild card. So with that one win, I got it right from week to week. Um, so we're getting really close to the trade deadline, so I'm sure there will be more to talk about at that point, but I kind of think we've kind of beaten the, we've kind of talked. How about, the, how about the biggest story to come out? About. How about the biggest story to come out of, come across the Cubs this week was Javi Baez talking about how they, they were saddened and the whole, the whole core, the, the world series core was shocked that they actually tore them apart. Well, I mean, they weren't going to... Is Baez represented by Boris, too, or is that just Bryant? I don't think he is. So you knew Bryant wasn't was going to oh, yeah. go all the way. You knew Bryant was going to play out the entire season without ever seriously engaging in, in extension talk. Yep. And, uh, but at the same time, I mean, if you want to, if you want to take the word that Theo and... Theo and Jeb engaged them in contract extension talks before the all before before spring training officially started, and they rejected those offers. Yeah, and all all of them said, "Nope, we don't want to negotiate in season." Yeah, it's it, you, if you know, so you can be saddened by it there or shocked that they they broke us up. But but bias you you, bias if, still if had another won, year on his contract. No, he was a free agent. I thought he was. I thought he had another no. year. I thought he was okay. Nope. All the he, guys that they traded it were all going to be free agents at the end of the year. Yeah, that's true. Okay, and but the only really the only guy that's really putting up great, good, good numbers on their new team is Rizzo. Yeah, it's been hurt all year. Baez is starting to be a little bit better, but. I mean, I think Nico offensively, Nico Horner is doing just as good yeah. offensively yeah. as Javi Baez would be doing. And so I don't know. And Bryant's been hurt. Bryant's been hurt. Rizzo's been doing really well. But how much of those numbers are have to do with the short porch at Yankee Stadium in right field? Yeah. Uh, and he loves that short porch and good for him. So, um Yeah, I don't think there's much trade talk for us to talk about. I mean, there's tons that we can talk about, but we've said it all. Everybody's for sale. Anybody that's on our major league roster is on the on the trade block, and if you want them, come get them. 
I don't think every. I think there's like two guys maybe that are really viable. There you go. That's that's our opinions. That's yeah, it. but you want to keep. Yeah, we, yeah. We we've already said on here in previous weeks the guys that probably aren't going to be traded due to the contracts or them being long term pieces, and we've already di- really discussed which guys are probably going to be marketed. Yep. So we'll get so, on we'll get on that when we'll actual wait. trade rumors and ha- and happenings start happening, which should happen in the next week or two. Yep. August second is the trade deadline yep. this year. August second. So, Mike, this year, this week, they're going to be in Philly coming out of the All-Star break on Friday with three games. They come home to face the Pirates, and then they go out west to face the Giants. So, they're going to lose the two to the Giants. They'll probably lose. I'm going to give them one. One game. One game. I'm going to give them two, as I think they can get one apiece out of the Phillies and Pirates. I think th- I think they could. I don't think they will. Every time I've thought they could do something like that, they don't. So, all right, the All Star Game. Juan Soto wins the home run derby. Yep. And the Albert derby. Pujols made it to the second round. He did. I didn't get to watch the home run derby. I didn't either. Uh, I, I'm too cheap to get ESPN. Yeah, me too. And they blacked it out, so I couldn't watch it on ESPN Plus. If I wanted to, I was out. I was out enjoying my birthday, so I didn't watch the. I didn't uh, yeah. watch the. Uh, you didn't watch too much of the All Star game either, as the I watched the end. AL won three to two. Were you rooting for a tie, Mike? That would have been fun. I would have been happy to see a tie after nine innings and see him go into penalty kick home run derby style. Yeah. Or home run derby penalty kick. I, I don't know what you how you call it. But. I was I was almost surprised that you didn't see that it wasn't maybe a setup to where the commissioner wanted to see a tie. Yeah, and it's like all right, you're going to put in this guy, put in the token all star as the closer of the game. I'm actually and he's going to lob it down the middle to get the yeah. get a home run. I'm actually really bummed it. that it didn't happen, or that mm. they didn't. Uh, I. I'm bummed that I didn't watch it uh, after listening to a few people and then actively watching uh, watching highlights. It looks like it was put together extremely well, um, probably one of the best produced. And it looks like what you would want for an all-star game. Yeah, multiple players were, were mic'd up during the game. Yep. Um, a lot of them had they, – they had earpieces that – you could that they, different camera angles too. Yeah. I think they had an they had a camera angle from you got to see the vantage point of an umpire yeah. behind the plate. All of that makes me really wish I would have watched the game. Um, yeah, I think I got the last. I watched the last two innings by the time we got we got home from the movies. Yeah. So. All right, Mike. So it's the All Star break, so it's time to see how our predictions are doing. Yeah. The American League East. So, um, so Mike, why don't you get up the MLB standings? Okay. I'll give you the teams that we predicted to win those divisions. And you tell me who is the current leader of the division by how many and how many games out the teams are. Okay. So the American League East, Mike, you picked the Rays. I picked the Blue Jays. So the Rays are 12 games back behind right. the Yankees. How bad are the- and how far back are the Blue Jays? Thirteen and a half. All right. So we'll see if any of them are in the wild card standings when we get there. Uh, the American League Central. We both said the White Sox. Yeah, they are three games back. Okay, a little bit closer than our East prediction. Behind the Twinkies. Um. So that's where they are. And then in the All West, right. we both picked. Well, you picked Houston. I picked the Astros. So who's leading that division, Mike? The Houston Asterix are in the lead in that division. Okay, so we got one right. Yeah. All right, Mike. Pull up the wild card standings. Um, okay. I, I have the standings up. I'll have to do some maths. Um, or do you, let's go to the National League and I can... I can bring up the wild card. They got to... Let me get the MLB at bat app up because they have make it really easy for wild card. I got it right here, too. I got it. We're good. Okay. All right. So, for the wild cards, you put the Jays, 
the Rangers and the Twins in the wild card. So off of your team, the Twins are in the playoffs. Yep. If the would the would the Jays and the Rangers, where are they at in the wild card? The game? Jays would make the playoffs. They are the third wild card. All right. The what was my other team? Uh, the Texas Rangers. They are. They don't have a how many games? Oh, they're seven games back. Okay, so Mike, I put the Rays, the Yankees, and the Mariners as my wild cards. The Yankees lead the division, so that team's in the playoffs, much like the Twins are for your wild card pick. Um, where are the Rays and the Mariners in the wild card? They are the first and second wild card. All right, so not too bad. So I got the wild cards right. So I'm just we're a little bit way off on the east and the central. All right, Mike. So your preseason ALCS, you put the Rays over the Asterix. I put the Blue Jays over the White Sox. How do you feel about yours? Um, while you're thinking about it, I'm not feeling too good about my ALCS pick. I put who Sox. over the White Sox? Uh, over the Asterix? Uh, you put the Rays. Oh, yeah. I think the Rays will do it. I think the Rays can make it. Yeah. Yeah, right now if right now I think it's going to be tough to beat the Yankees. Oh, I think yeah. they would go out and make a make a big big addition if they needed to, if they needed to or wanted to just to block somebody from getting into it. So, if we were writing down and putting what our prediction was going to be for the LCS and changing it at the midway point, I I probably have to say the Yankees over the over the uh over the Asterix. Yeah. I can right. I can buy that. The National League. Mike, you gave the East to the Phillies. I gave it to the Braves. Uh, the Mets are in first. Okay. The Braves are two and a half games back. The Phillies are eight and a half games back. All right. The Central, we both gave it to the Brew Crew. Brew Crew is in first. Half a game over St. Louis. All right. The Dodgers in the West. And they are ten games up. Gotcha. All right, Mike, your wild card teams were the Braves, the Padres, and the Mets. Well, the Mets currently lead the division, so where are the Braves and the Padres for you? The Braves are first in the wild card, and the the Padres are second in the wild card. And guess who's in third? The Phillies. Meaning, every one of my if the if playoffs started tomorrow, every one of my teams would be in the playoffs. All right. So, Mike, I gave my wild cards to the Mets, with, who currently lead their division, and my two other picks were the Cardinals and the Phillies. So the Cardinals are tied, but not. They are less than a half game back from the Phillies, but they are percentage-wise point zero zero one. All right. So, Mike, we both picked the Dodgers to come out of the National League. You have them beating the Braves. I have them beating the Brewers. I still like it. I think it's probably going to be the Mets instead of the Brewers. Really? If I, if I was going to change. I think the Mets are – they've got an owner in Steve Steve Cohen that's got a lot of money and wants to see a winner. Yeah, but so – I think they could be a team that's going to make a move at the trade deadline, and they also get Jacob DeGrom back. Ooh, yeah. In a couple weeks. Yeah, but but DeGrom has tended to need some time to get his feet under him. So that might not be might not be the ace in the hole that they're hoping to get back. Uh, I think that the Braves are designed to play series mm -hmm. more than they're designed to play to win lots and lots of games. In a in a three game series the Braves can destroy you in a five game series. They are built to beat you. That's why I like the Braves. They are a playoff okay. built team. They are not a, the C they just need to, they're built to get into the playoffs and then win in playoffs. Okay. And that, that's a good point to make about the Braves. That's what happened last year. Yeah. So I, I think it's still going to be good, but I think the Dodgers just 
the Dodgers did what the Dodgers do. Uh, they had a guy that uh, that that upset him, so they bought him. And then he cried when he went back home. You look confused. I am. Uh, who who did the Dodgers pick up in the off season? The big one. Um, that was a brave. Freddie Freeman. Yeah, Freeman. And he cried when he oh. went back to Atlanta? Mm-hmm. Well, Freeman beat them in the playoffs. That's why Atlanta did what they did. So what has what have the Dodgers been doing the last five years? Anytime somebody beats them, they go out and buy that guy. They went out and bought Freeman. All right, that's an interesting way to look at it. I like it. So um, because the Blue Jays are so far back in the playoffs, not feeling too good about my preseason World Series pick of the of the Ray of the Jays winning the entire thing. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to happen. I, I don't think, think they the... can make the playoffs, but it's going to make them. It's going to probably have them having to go on a run like the Braves. Yeah. And just getting hot at the right time for it to happen. So we'll see. Yeah. There's still plenty of baseball left to be played. There's still Question. plenty of moves to be made. Uh, so you, question real quick. There's still plenty of time left. Go do ahead, you Mike. think the Blue Jays will be forced to play in Buffalo during the playoffs because of the strict restrictions on the the playoff? What? Because there there could be playoff players, and they've they've won games because. The teams that have come there have not been able to field a full team, like a full active roster team, because of the restrictions that Canada has on travel. I'd like to say no, but depending on who they play, it wouldn't surprise me if they would make them go to Buffalo to play the game. I'm to avoid wa- that that travel restriction that Canada has. I would guess that that's probably what's going to happen because it wouldn't be fit, especially in play like regular season baseball, maybe, but I don't know that I don't, I think, yeah, I think they will be forced to, I think that's going to have to, I think that's going to be what happens. If I had tomorrow morning off, I'd call Dan Patrick and ask him that question. I don't have the morning off. So. Gotcha. All right. So, Mike, last week uh, when we talked about um, NFL, no, yeah, when we talked oh. about Charlie Montoya losing his job, you brought up well, who else is on the hot seat? Yeah. So, Mike, who else do you think is on the hot seat? The only guy that I can really think of is Tony La Russa, the yep. guy that was kind of like a head scratcher on why they even hire the old man in the first place. Yeah, I. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was that was one of those. For me, that's for me. That's the only that's the only guy I can think of. Yeah, I think everybody else is pretty secure. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think he would be. Because I think even if the Dodgers lose the World Series, David Bell don't make it to the World Series. I don't think Dave Roberts would be let go. Dave Bell? The Reds were expected to lose or not do as well. So I don't think they would let go of Bell. Would let go of Bell. Maybe Don Mattingly at this point. If, Ooh. If the current ownership group realizes that that front office wasn't the guy that what isn't the, the organization that hi, it isn't the front office that hired Mattingly. So he has no ties to the current front office. So Matheny? I could see him. Mike they Matheny. Stuck with, they stuck with Ned Yost for a <laughs> long time in Kansas City. So I think that's – and they're still – and they're a rebuilding team, so I don't think they're – I don't think Matheny's going to be – going to get the call, get the ax, because the team isn't doing well. Davey Martinez. Hmm. 
maybe. He's still riding that World Series title, though. He's still got that World Series That's title. That's true. That's true. To fall back on. So does, the only other thing... Go ahead, Mike. When does... When do seats heat up in Chicago? I mean, Tony's were saying it's heated up. And I, I agree. I think Tony LaRusa not performing where he should be. But... When does David Ross have to start looking over his shoulder... Yeah. Ooh. That's a tough one because I think he's put in, he was put into a bad, he he went from being a, all right, let's see if a, a different voice in the clubhouse could turn things around with the core, give the core one last run. We're going to give the reins to David Ross instead of Joe and letting go of Joe Madden, but then his. He had, the, he had the COVID season, and then he had 16 where they blew it up midway through the season. Yep. So I, I almost think that he's going to get the Rick Renteria treatment, and he's going to be the guy that's going to – he's going to be there for the rebuild, but he might not get to reap the fruits of the rebuild. Okay. I, I agree. It's just because of our audience and because of who we are, we have to have that conversation. Yeah. So, okay. I totally agree, though. Totally agree. I don't think his, his seat is warm. I don't even think that he's needs to worry about it. So, um, David, I think I think you're right. David Ross is safe, and there's no no real reason for him to look over his shoulder anytime soon. So. All right. So, Mike, the only other news to, to about really about baseball before we go to the NFL was a lot of the things that came out of the All Star break. Supposedly. Yep. There was, um, it went public that the A's were going to make their lone All Star fly commercial to the All Star game <laughs> instead of chartering a flight for him. The Astros heard about it. The Astros players heard about it. Their owner offered, talked it over with their All Stars and offered him a seat on their plane's charter since the two teams were playing against each other in Houston. So he flew he flew down he flew out to LA with the Astros and Juan Soto, the home run derby champ, flew commercial to get out to the all star game. It was said that he got into LA at one thirty in the morning and then went out and won the home run derby the same day. Man, I on that night. And it was said that they didn't want to charter him a flight because he rejected a contract extension that would have given him four hundred and forty million dollars for how long over i think it was 10 years i and and i it's and I biting him in the butt right now i think it's biting I him think. in the butt right now but i would say i like the um who's the pitcher that got in trouble for the way that he enjoys to bauer yeah yeah his bauer got me. i love bauer's uh bauer's mindset He's never he never signs a multi year deal that is locked in because he he wants to bet on himself every year. Now is he bite is that biting him in the butt because now he's a commodity that nobody wants to really touch? Yeah. But does it give him an opportunity to every year? Because if you play that mentality and you you are performing at that high level and you are one of the top we'll see even say top 20 top 30 people in your position if you're an all-star at your position or a, or a finalist for the all-star game mm -hmm. at your position let's let's go with that every year somebody else is getting a contract in your position you say, hey, they just made X amount per year. If I'm I'm worth that much at least, right? Mm -hmm. And yes, you might have a year where you have a down year. That's on you. That's your performance. You have to step it up the next year to make your to make up the money that you're gonna lose because, well, so and so played this much better than you. Your contract offers this. And so you're only getting three million this year. But next year, you played your heart out. You made you proved your point. 
we're going to give you 10 million. Like, why not? Why not bet on yourself? Yeah, I don't think it's a deal of going betting against himself. I think that he is a Scott Boris client, so there was no way he was going to going to sign a, an extension in season. I, but I mean, is a little is it a little petty of the ownership group to say? Oh yeah. No, we're we're not going to charter a flight for one guy. Yeah, I for one guy to go to the All Star game. So you're you're going to have to either pay for your own flight or here we'll get you this first class ticket uh, with United Airlines or something like that. To get you to all that. Um, I don't know. No, you're in the continental United States. It's not going to be that expensive to charter a flight. Charter the flight. Worst case, you charter a small plane. You charter a, a Learjet. If you're flying from 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 Toronto to L.A. That would be the longest flight, right? Is Miami maybe to LA Boston, a longer maybe flight? Boston to Miami, maybe Miami to LA. Boston. Okay, Boston would be the longer flight. Miami to Seattle. Um, so Boston to LA, if you're f- making that flight, you get a Learjet. The, it's a quick trip. You're going to be fine. <laughs> Just spend the money. So on the flip side of that, even and a guy, even a guy maybe on the on the on his rookie deal, makes the All Star team as a rookie. Yeah. Could he afford to charter oh. his own plane? Nope. To get there. No, he'd have a guy, a rookie, on his rookie deal. In the All Star break, if he's going from Boston to L A. He's got to fly. He's got to fly. Maybe coach even. The scarier, but but again, most of the teams, most of the other teams are chartering a flight. Do what Houston did. Be the be the big men. Be the do the right thing and say, hey, we're all going to the same place. Hop in this plane with me. Because half of those teams, most of those teams, are playing guys in their same in their same uh, in the same league. And so you're you're playing on the same team together tomorrow. Why wouldn't you? That's petty and it's childish and even if you don't even if you're not the owner of that team that did it, if you're the owner of the other team and you didn't say, "Hey, catch a jump on this plane. We're going to we're going to let's go." All right. That's all I got on it. I mean, but yeah, I mean, I think it's I, I like what I like what Philly what what uh, what Houston did. Yeah. To um, you know what? Yeah, you don't have to fly coach. You don't have to fly commercial. You can come on our plane with us. We're all going to the same place. So yeah, I, so yeah. maybe that wasn't an option for Soto, or it leaked that him or his agent leaked that. Yep, you have to fly commercial. Yeah, it's that's terrible. Okay, Rich, um, we are on week. 1.5? I guess so. I mean, I guess it's two. Two if we're going show to show. Yeah. We're, we're kind of like divisional previews. Yep. This week, we're going to talk about the East. Yeah. The East. So, so Mike, where, would, would you like to start with the American or the National Conference? That's a great That's a great question. Do you want to start with what I think is the best team in the NFL, the best l- division in the NFL? Or the the highest rising division in the NFL. You have the controls, Mike, so I'll let you choose. Let's go. Let's go. The best division ha- housing the best team in the AFC. Let's talk the AFC West. The Buffalo Bills, by far and away, I think are the best team in the AFC. I can agree with that. I think they are going to be the team to beat because, I, I for me, I think the number one overall seed in that conference is theirs to lose. 
Yeah. They could have some tough divisional games against New England because the Pats the Pats and the Bills always play each other tough. Yep. And the Dolphins got better. The Dolphins but have gotten a lot time, better. At the same time, the West is going to be brutal. The West oh, is yeah. going to be brutal. I don't know. I don't think the. Uh, I think the Colts and the Titans could be duking it out for the division. So there, there could be some divisional losses there. And then the Central is always unpredict. The North is always unpredictable with how good those teams are. Yeah. Yeah, and and we don't know what North is showing up this year. If it's last year's North, that that's going to be a bloodbath. We already know one of the teams is not going to be l- the same. Uh, self-inflicted wounds. We'll talk about that when we get there. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but we are talking about the AFC North, the AFC yeah. East. So we, you, th- it's, I, we both say that that the Bills are the team to beat. The um, yeah, they went so, and Vaughn Miller guess, for that defense. I'm gonna, and, I'll bring in the guest of the show. He said his prediction, and you can okay. put it in the prediction book if you want. The AFC title game, Kansas City has to go to the Snow Bowl and play in Buffalo. I like it. I think Kansas. I yeah. think I think Buffalo is going to be the team to beat. And can you imagine, man? How great is that going to be? the first week of January watching games being played in eight foot of snow in Buffalo. That could make for some good TV. I, this, I am here for it. Let's the, the AFC goes through Buffalo. Yeah. I, I like that too. So the other team in the division that made a lot of noise in this offseason with the moves that they made, Miami. They brought in Trey Ron Armstead, probably the best left tackle in the free agent class. Yep. And they brought in Tyreek. The, in my opinion, I think they traded away a lot of draft picks and over probably overpaid for Tyreek Hill to uh, give, make, give him a number one contract. Yep. So they have the weapons around to uh, – Will he if Tua, elevate? Will he elevate his game, or will he not make that big step forward? And next year, they're thinking long and hard about maybe a guy that they can bring in to replace Tua. We'll know halfway through the season what the fate of Tua is going to be. We're going to know. Um, and it's it. He can only improve. That's that's what I'm going to say. Yeah, and he's got. And and not only did they pre- bring in people that are great weapons for him and great weapons to protect him, but what they did is they brought in veteran guys. Not only are they massive weapons, but they have the experience. They've been there. They've been to the top. They've won Super Bowls. And they're there to say, Tua, this is what you have to do. Yeah, I know that your quarterback's supposed to be the leader of the room. But sometimes, especially when you have a young quarterback, you have to have somebody that comes alongside him and says, Hey, kid, let me help you out here. And I think I think that's half the reason they went after Tyreek. All right. Does Miami make the playoffs? Ooh. You know, we've probably already decided that they're probably not going to win the division. They, they won't win they the division. They do enough. Did they do enough to make the playoffs? The hard part about that is that pesky third team in the division that we've mentioned, and that's the Patriots. Uh, yeah. The Patriots are always a wild card, and when Belichick is backed into a wall, he'll cheat his way out. And I'm not saying that he's definitely going to cheat this year. I think he tr- tries to push the envelope as far as he can. His goal, I, and again, I don't think his mindset is that he's cheating. I think he believes he's pushing the, the envelope as far as it's legally allowed and enough people don't agree. And that's why he gets in trouble so much. Now, can Miami overcome and make the playoffs? I think they have the ability to. Again, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Tua steps up 
and I'm going to say they do. They make the playoffs, uh, but I don't think they're they're long for the playoffs. Yeah, I, I have them in the playoffs because once it, it, for me it kind of comes down to, well, who's that third team going to be? Yeah. And I think Miami made the moves. They made enough moves to make the playoffs. Yep. Now. So as long as Tua is serviceable, and they have a good backup quarterback behind him that could come in if he gets hurt in Teddy Bridgewater, to where I don't think they'd have to change the offense too much if he had to come in. Yeah, Teddy two gloves, though. I mean, you got to uh. – now, the final team in the AFC the, is the Jets. Uh, I've seen people say they are the most improved team in the in the league. Um, but, again, when you're a dumpster fire – when you're a dumpster fire and you don't and the fire's been put out, you're still a dumpster. That's an improvement. They're going to be the worst team in the league this year. Oh no, they won't. If when you're, when we're looking at doing our power rankings from week to week, it would not surprise me if they stay out of the bottom five. I agree. I agree. I can agree with that. They, they do have a lot of potential to be above the bottom five. In the, in the power rankings. I, I can wholeheartedly get it behind that. Okay. Yeah. Now, so I think the Jets, instead of maybe picking in the first four picks, are probably going to be in the lower part of the top ten. Yep. Okay. Now, uh, so, the and I, do, I do have a question yes. for you about the Patriots, though. Yeah. They have decided not to name coordinators. So yeah. they don't know who's going to be their offensive play caller, who's going to – they, they with with the defense they have like a defensive line coach and then a defensive assistant and they've now now that Josh McDaniels is in Vegas as the head coach they've decided to go a similar route with the offensive side of the ball yeah where it could be Joe Judge or Matt Patricia I think the biggest problem right on now on the offensive side of the ball is you think that could hinder them if they don't have a clear guy like McDaniels calling the play, calling is being the one working with the offense. Could Belichick have to take on a larger role now on both sides of the ball instead of delegating? So that yes, yeah. He, could Belichick stretch himself too thin trying to manage the coaching staff and the game planning? I think it's possible. The bigger thing though is is that. Belichick is the type of guy who has his fingertips in everything. Every aspect of the Lee of the of his team, he has his fingertips in. He doesn't go he doesn't go far. He knows he but he knows what ever, what's happening everywhere on his team. He already he's been doing that for years. He lost his number 2. He didn't think he was ever going to lose his number two, and he lost his number two this year. Um, so that being said, yeah, um, we'll see. Uh, I don't, I don't think, I don't think he'll be spread too thin, but I think uh, it'll be an interesting, it'll be interesting to see how the fight goes down to see who runs the offense. But yeah, I also still got a young quarterback in Matt in Mac Jones. I also think you always have to think about does do the guys uh, do, does he ever let anybody fully take on a role and control everything there? In all honesty, we know that he takes on the roles and he he is the architect of the team. And the general contractor. So. Okay. Okay, right. let's go to the NFC East because we got to be quick. Uh, I have argued many a times that they are the NFC least. Rich, give me your argument this year why they have grown away from that and why they are no longer the NFC least. I don't think they're the NFC least anymore. Okay. Because, I mean, I think there's talent there okay. that we don't know who the division winner could be, and it's not going to be, well, somebody has to win this division, so in, 
so a ga- uh, so a team that's a game below 500 or one game above 500 wins the division. There's talent across that entire division outside of the New York Football Giants. Okay, you think the that... Commanders have done well. The Commanders have built a good defense. They think Carson Wentz could come in and do a little better. But the could. Commanders are in such disarray in general. They are. Their ownership, their ownership is making for that team to have. The ownership to isn't not even be in the spotlight. He, the ownership won't be in the country until. Until after the election, and maybe even longer. He's got a subpoena around his neck to appear before Congress. And he's hanging out in the, in the, in France, in the south of France on his mega yacht. Yeah, I mean, what I think it, for me, I think the commanders aren't, aren't going to be, they could challenge for a wild card if things go right because Ron Rivera has proven to be a calming calming of the storm guiding the ship. Ron Rivera is the 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 shining light of that team. And I think of anybody, he's probably the best person to be there for them. But there's so much going on around there. He half of his questions are going to be about have you talked to your owner at in the last month, what can you tell me about your owner? What's going on with your owner? And he's going to say, guys, I got a team to talk about. Let's talk about my team. But that's not what anybody's going to want to talk about. All right. But sell me on the Dolphins. Uh, sell me on the Eagles. The Eagles, they added A.J. Brown. Okay, A.J. Good, Brown. They, so they built up a good defense through the draft. I like their draft pick. So they halfway through right a game, guy. he's going to take his clothes off and walk off the field naked again? A.J. Brown. Oh, A.J. Brown. Sorry. Sorry. A.J. Brown. Not Antonio Brown. Antonio You're Brown's right. not in the league. That's right. Um, Antonio A.J. Brown's Brown. I mean, A.J. The, Brown. The question that kind of surrounds the, the Eagles is they the first part of the year, they were a big passing team. Yep. And then, half, then the second part of the team, they were more of a ground and pound ground and pound type of team so what what are they going to do on the offensive side of the ball but they play good defense I think I have the Eagles winning the division you have the Eagles winning the the division wow yeah I think the Cowboys are could be the Cowboys will always be in the news cycle and they'll get the primetime games and the coverage because everybody in the media loves the Dallas Cowboys or likes to cover the Dallas Cowboys whether they're doing good or bad. Skip Bayless keeps them in the news. Yeah. Stephen A. Smith loves to yeah. criticize them. Criticize them. Chris, Skip so, Bayless loves to worship them. Stephen A. Smith loves to hate on them. They're always going to be in the news. I agree. They're I, always going to get the primetime games because always. they're America's team. Good call. But so They're going to get the primetime game, so they're going to be do you always going to get the media. Okay. Do you believe they're, that they have the, the ability to get two teams in the playoffs this year? I do, only because I'm not sure. Right now, right now, I have things penciled in on the NFL. <sighs> I don't know that I – Your wild what, card? It's, it's coming down to I don't know who the third team's going to be. I think the the West can put two in, but I don't know if the, the North West can't can get a third team in. The North isn't going to get another team in. Maybe the South with the Panthers or Saints, but I just don't see the West putting three teams in like they did last year, because we'll, we'll talk about it when we get to the West. But because yeah. Arizona, the third team from that division that made it is going to be without their best wide receiver in DeAndre Hopkins. Yep, yep. And DeAndre Hopkins doesn't play, the Cardinals offense doesn't function as well. Yeah, we'll get to that. And I, uh, I, I still disagree. I think... So needing teams to put into the playoffs, I put the Philly winning the division, the Cowboys as a wild card. My preseason... Them San Francisco. And right now I have the Saints. But, okay. I, but I'm still working on that one. My preseason power rankings which i haven't put put in the thing but i've done in my head so have i so have i 
Uh, I've got them on. I've got them on a spreadsheet. Okay. Actually, no, they they are on my op- eye test is updated with as a preseason. I'll do that. I'll try to do that this week. Uh, my preseason. I don't think I have. I think. Yeah, I think the top team in the a- NFC East is the Cowboys, and I hate saying that because I hate the Cowboys, but I think they have the most talent on their team. And I think I have them at like 14 or 15. I put the Dallas Cowboys at 13, the Eagles at 11. You have the Eagles? This man has the Eagles at 11, folks. Wow, you are on that Eagles train this year. Am I going to hear you sing Fly Eagles Fly cuz the Bears are going to suck so bad you don't really you're we're, you're not going to no. get to sing Bear Down Chicago Bears Bear Down? All right. So the teams I have below I have Miami. Do you think Miami's better than Philly? Yes. I think they've okay. I think they've improved more than Philly has this offseason. Miami okay. has a, has improved significantly more than the Phillies have this offseason. Okay. You're, you 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 think Dallas is better than them? I do think Dallas is better than them. Baltimore, Vegas, Tennessee, New Vegas England, is Arizona. Vegas, I think, is the most overrated team in the in in the league. We'll talk about that uh, two weeks, or is that next week? Um, we have the West next week. Okay, folks, tune in next week when we talk about the West. Uh, you're you're selling me. That they're not the least, but they're the east. They're not quite the least, but they're almost the least. Okay. Is this division, looking at it as all the teams in the division, is this division as a whole better than the north? We'll find out when we talk about the north. (laughs) We'll find out when we talk about the north. Uh, I do have a lot to talk about with that north. So it's a good thing we kind of have it split up a little bit. Okay, folks, uh, real quick, we have quick hits, and then we are out of here. We've gone an hour and 12 minutes already, Rich. So um, it's kind of why I was trying to get you nailed down on that. Okay, uh, quick hits uh, before we do shout-outs. First quick hit, uh, the Estherville Midgets are playing in the championship game tomorrow, 2.30. Central Standard Time, um, or Central Daylight Time, correction, Daylight Time. Uh, check them out, okay. uh, cheer them on, let's go, the Mighty Midgets, uh, boys, baseball. boys Baseball. So, All right, okay. you're going to get a chance to at least stream the game somehow. Uh, maybe? I don't think maybe. so, but I, I'm not sure. I want to... I, I, Depending on how work goes tomorrow, I might. I, I have some extra hours built up. I might be able to leave a little early, so I might be able to come home and watch the second half of the game, but we'll see. Okay, Rich. Okay. Um, once again, we shout out Rich this week, uh, turning 40. Uh, you've made it this far. Let's go. Let's go 80 more, Rich. Happy birthday. Uh, as of Tuesday, you've been over the hill. and you're. S- but the best part about being over the hill the view yeah you got a great view there rich i'm i'm right behind you on that i still got a couple years left uh three to be in fact uh and then uh shout out number two i have our guest in the studio sunday is joe's birthday sunday's my dad's birthday so happy birthday to you dad um we won't talk about it that it was 65 years ago that he was born this week um, pensioner officially, pensioner age, and uh, yeah, retired. So that's what twenty five years, Rich. You'll be that age. Yeah, yeah, my, yeah. My wife pointed out that, that I'm closer to uh, retirement than I am from uh, graduating graduating high school. High school I think oh. It is, so whoa. oh man, Rich. Bad. I think I need a minute, and that wasn't even about me. Whoa. <laughs> I know, I know. It was bad. Um, I really don't have any quick, any uh, any shout outs this week. So okay. uh, thanks for uh, doing the show on a Thursday night. Yeah. As I'm not sure what what the internet coverage is up in uh, 
down in uh, Canton, Illinois, uh, where we'll be out on the man-made lakes there at Giant Goose Ranch. Giant Goose Ranch. Um, okay. Just a reminder, everybody, uh, hop on over. There's a link for it in the descriptions wherever you find our show, as well as probably on our Facebook page. Yep. For where you can sign up for our fantasy football league. There's still eight spots left. Mike, we're the only two in the league so far. Hey, that's all right. So we, you may have we we uh, we might have to recruit some people to join the league. Yep. Instead of uh, depending on the posts, our posts uh, every week to uh, draw some people in. Okay. We're going to keep it um, open without going public on Yahoo until August 13th. Yep. August 13th because we're going to be drafting on the 28th, so Sunday night. Okay. Um, so, Mike, if uh, they're watching us here on Facebook and they want to take us with them wherever they may go, where else, how what are our options? Look, for us, where, to us? look for us wherever you find your podcasts. Uh, and then look for Balls and Sticks, the podcast. Look for Rich and I uh, acting like we're in our tuxedos, acting like we're getting ready to hit a baseball. Rich, they're watching us or they're listening to us on YouTube. They don't want to get it signed into Facebook. What can they do? Well, um, uh, YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Well, you said they were watching on YouTube. You threw me off. Oh, I thought I, I meant yeah, they're yeah, listening to they us in their you podcast. If you're listening, yeah, if you're listening to us on, on, on the podcast, you don't really like Facebook. You can always catch. Um, you can catch the recorded version on YouTube um, as well. Or if you're listening to us on the in the podcast land or on Facebook, and you maybe want to you maybe want to support the channel, but maybe listening to us at a faster speed, you can check us out on YouTube as well. You yep. can do do that on YouTube as well as Mike usually gets those up uh, within a couple of days of the recordings, if not the same night. Yep. Um, so, Mike, I think that's all we got. So uh, we'll talk at you next week. So, Mike, what's the time to do? Roll the outro. Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa, this is Balls and Sticks, the podcast, with your hosts, Mike and Rich. <laughs>